what about you? And in this one, we're going to have another wee look at this wee hand tech, uh, wee hand telescope. And uh, we're going to look at some of its good points, bad points. So the Bell Mechanic Matt did a video and he featured this wee boy here so he went and uh, got himself one of these here and uh, he found it a good job because it's you know you can adjust it a lot more than the wee scope that you get on the power probe and, and stuff like that there. So the, there are a few features with it and some good some bad it's okay you know you get what you pay for it's like everything in the world you know. So. I'll try and keep this, this is going to reflect like mad here, but that's a can high and a can low signal there. And if I just uh, stop that, so that stopped the capture, there we go. Now, that's, I had to do a bit of adjusting to get it like that, you know. Uh, so, let me see, if we go into the menu, it's just, this is just an example of, uh, now, this may work on your car maybe, but... I doubt, I doubt it. So if we go in the menu, uh, vehicle diagnostics, it says there, and you can't really see it. The top one there is highlighted is vehicle diagnostics. I hit enter and hit bus diagnostics. And can bus data view is that top one. And I'll try and keep it out of the reflecting as best I can, but don't worry about that. And we'll go into that and there ain't anything showing at all and uh, so that's because the trigger set too low so if I hit the trigger button and take her up a wee bit we'll start to get something but it's still all over the shop and well, it's way over to the right so if I hit the time and uh, scoot it over into the middle of the screen a bit better and if we hit channel one there and go into voltage, get it up to two volts, channel two, up to two volts, and we're starting to get somewhere, and uh, we'll go back into channel one again, and we'll just pull her down a wee bit, you know, so there's a few adjustments you, you need to make, and to be quite honest with you, on any scope with presets on it, it doesn't suit everything, you know, but uh, I noticed that this was this was pretty off, you know, uh, the the presets on, it. and there there are uh, three different options for CAN bus here. And this is, we're just using CAN bus as an example, uh, so some of the other stuff might be alright, and that's the same. So again, the trigger set to low. It's basically on the baseline there, so we need to just pop it up a wee bit, and we'll start to get somewhere. But that's zoomed away in. Uh, I don't go in the menu again. So what's that? Cam bus, uh, LH, low and high, long capture, enter, and same crack, you know? So we'll get her up, and now we're starting to go. So what you can do with this is, now I'll just get it back to the, the first screen again, so I'll save you the bother of me showing you that. So that's it back to where I had at the start, and we'll just stop it. So it is quite handy, you, you know, it does get a bit of use, getting used to the, the navigation of it, you know, so you hit time and then you get a menu for these function keys and that does all the time base, up and down and left and right, so left and right brings it across the screen back and uh, the same with channel, same with trigger and then this wee button here is like, you know, a personal mode, so it's like personal settings, you know, so you can you can adjust the, the backlight display and the... Uh, the time that it goes off and, and stuff like that and what I noticed was I set it to infinite so it doesn't switch off but every time I go, I go into it again it uh, you know it, it seems to have went back to a default setting so you can go through uh, there's different sort of ways of doing it and it's not going to show up in the camera very well in this position but we're going to move position so if I have it on shut down as infinite let's see if we can get that infinite and you can go across like that so it's 
that's five out of five there so it's five menus out of five but you can just hit that keep hitting that button and does the same does the same crack you know so if we go into that there's this uh reference and save here reference and save so if we're going to save right i know you're not going to be able to see this on the screen very well i keep saying that so if we're going to save you can you, there's position positions one the six two three four five six so we'll select position two for a laugh and we'll hit save so that's that saves that and uh, if we hit recall here we can recall our positions so there's one that i had in it there six is nothing there's a, a bit of a square wave on one and there's our jobby on saved on two so what we're going to also do then is we can come out of that and go into reference and uh, we can save that in reference and it's enabled off there enabled off so if we enable that on and we'll totally come out of that again oh, i just turned it off there if we come back into there and uh we can call up our reference so our reference is actually in the, in the background there and it's it's sort of gray color uh, so what I'll do is I'll move move it down and you can sort of just see it the original waveform in the background there okay so stop it flashing so you can uh, you can marry it up and you can compare waveforms but you can connect this to a PC as well and uh, yeah, it's the Hantac PC software, which is a bit glitchy, but I'm going to show you that anyway. So the software, and it has to be for this particular scope, the 2000 series, and uh, you get it Hantac.com, download it onto your PC. It does work on Windows 10. This laptop is running Windows 10, so it's connected to uh, the USB on the side, and you have to have it running. So... <laughs> I have it. I have it set the sort of where it was. But whenever I ran this software, whatever the settings were here, it took over on the scope, and you know you lost your capture again. So you had to readjust the time base and the voltage levels and the trigger and all for uh, you know back again. So that's a bit of a pain. Now this is a bit useless in my opinion because this is this is a handheld scope, so why would you want to do that well okay there's a couple of things you can do with it and uh, it's not great the latency is horrific so this thing this thing is taken over on the scope and it's basically stopping it and starting it and and you know it's taken it's ta it's taken over from it and it's, it's sort of so if i put you down here you can see it's not green and it's not constantly wrong so it's stopping and it's just taking like a capture and then it's taking another capture. So that's what seems to happen. I don't know how you can adjust that or turn it off. I can't find any means of doing that anyway. But that's that's where you are. Now people have asked, can you can you record this and, and stuff like that? Well, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, so over to the right hand side. Now there's there's file drop downs here, uh, but where it stores the files and how you get it back it just i can't get it to work it's just <laughs> it's just but there's a bit down down the bottom here and you probably can't see it and uh there's a thing you can do and there's a, a feature on here playback so i think i saved something earlier on that's not a combo signal it's just a score wave or something and uh we'll see if it's gonna play it here and there we go so that's that's replayed uh something that i recorded earlier on and it's doing it very quick there so i'll just uh do it again 
change a wee setting here. So it comes up, play up here, set red light there, and uh, that's a, a square rave that I that I recorded uh, ages ago. So you can record your capture, and uh, we'll just go back out of that again. And yeah, it does have a bit of a mind of its own because there's, uh, I think it's changed the whatever settings that recording was, was it maybe? No, it hasn't. Um, but it's something's definitely changed. Well, but anyway, you, I don't know why you'd want to need that, want to use that. It's, it's, this isn't really designed for that. And see if you have a Pico and you're using Pico software, like this, the Pico just blows that out of the water, you know? Uh, but anyway, what you can do then as well, this is an arbitrary wave generator and a digital multimeter. And the arbitrary wave generator is there as well. And when you hit it, it takes over on the scope and changes it. And uh, we'll just hit that to be on. So that's a, a, a sine wave output, square wave output, a trapezoid, and all that all nonsense. So you can command it, you can command it from there. But again, I don't know why you'd want, want to do that uh, at all. But the multimeter is on it. And it's actually maybe quite useful because it records it. Let's just zoom in that wee bit. So see that uh, list there down the right hand side? That is recording every it's taking a, a you know a reading of, of the voltage every uh looks like it's 0.3 of 0.4 of a second and it categorizes there and it's all zero at the minute but uh i'm going to, going to show you where this might be useful so if something's set up here it's just for demonstration now this isn't a, a real life uh measurement here but we are going to measure something but there's there's no problem with this vehicle this is my own vehicle so we'll have the negative lead disconnected from the battery and we have this blue wire here from the negative lead it goes around through a shunt resistor and those two not those two leads the blue the red and the black sorry are going to are going over here to the to the wee hand tank meter which is plugged into the laptop over here so at the minute down that side there is uh, recording the voltage on the display there and there's a wee graph there as well but it's this bit here we're interested in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clear that and I'm going to connect the the shunt resistor to the negative terminal and you can see the voltage going up and then the car will then go to sleep so it shouldn't take too long and uh there we go there's the there's it going down so hopefully it'll uh go a bit down so i'll pause the video there okay uh three or four minutes there and the car's went to sleep and we're still recording on the the right hand side there so it doesn't record that bit there it's recording this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that and it comes up with a, a save box there and we'll save that. So that means we can recall that up and we can, we can look at that. So these are our results and uh, when we save that, we just, I just opened that up and, and I think it's in WordPad that. So you could open up in Notepad or Excel or something like that. So if we scoot down, we can see the time. Uh, so number one, number two, number three, number four, that's the, the captures and the, the time there. And it looks like a, a lot of numbers, but if you look at over at the right hand side, you see the voltage. So it starts off with uh, 0 0.02 volts. So that uh, is nothing happening there. And then we have 1 1.49, 1.493, 1 1.493, 1 1.44, 1.308, 1.435, 2585, 
and on she goes there 1.03 1.029 and then we'll go from 1.026 to 0.85 0 0.86 0 0.59 0 0.444 repeating there 0 0.44 0 0.44 on down so that's at 0.44 uh, lower and down 0.3 uh, on down 0 0.3 0 0.3 let me see how low does it go so yeah it goes as low as 0 0.3 0 0.313 there and uh, yeah 0 0.3 there she's going to sleep at that point so 0.311 volts to 0.18 and then 0 0.079 0 0.022 and that's the car gone to sleep at that point so you can look at the time there uh, what's that one minute and 30 uh, seconds there a tick just get it right up the top yeah so back down where we were again one minute and 30 was that yeah one minute and 30 seconds uh, we're down to point not two so one minute and 30 seconds it actually took for that car to go to sleep it seemed a bit longer when i had the video paused but uh there we are so long-term parasitic drain and there's your data and how long do we let that go for there just scoot it right down to the bottom so it's taken 421 uh, readings and they are what would that be there 0 0.258 0 0.640 to 0 0.259 so it's about every half a second there it's uh, it's taking a, a recording so you don't need any fancy software uh, to do that if you have one of those we uh, hand tech handhelds uh, you can open that up in, as I say, Excel, WordPad or whatever. I don't have Microsoft Office in this laptop, but it just opened it and uh, it gave me a choice of WordPad or Notebook or something along those lines. And that was quite handy done. So you can call that fail whatever you want. And uh, away you go. So I thought that was a handy wee feature uh, in case guys that own one of them or they're thinking of getting one of them that you can do. And uh, you can use that with the with the shunt resistor that I showed in a previous video and uh, have a look through the channel pages if you want to find out more about that. So there you go. And uh, that's about it for that one. Many thanks for watching. Hope it gives you a bit more in that wee scope because I haven't really showed it. So thanks for watching. All the best and bye bye.